These are five things that I want you to do if you are born out of poor background. By the way, do you know why? Have you ever seen a tendency in these poor families whereby you find they are sort of likely to actually sort of contaminate their future generation out of these kind of things? Have you ever seen some families actually struggling to get out of themselves into this poor background or something of sort. Actually, in Africa, we call it ending this, you know, poverty generation sort of a thing, okay? Now, the point is this. Today, I'm going to share with you five things that you ought to do so that at least you get yourself out of this situation, all right? Let's get into the business. But before we do this, I am sharing this information with you for free. I only one thing. I want one thing in favor, okay? And I'm requesting. It doesn't cost you anything. Just like this video. Hit that like button. doesn't cost you anything, okay? And also make sure that you subscribe so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new good video. And my name is Joseph. In case you're watching me for the first time, welcome. Let's get in the business. Now, what well, the first thing that you're supposed to do if you come from a poor background? The first thing is that get out of your village. That's the first thing, okay? And that's, uh, that is applicable if it is possible for you to do exactly that. Like any, or if you've actually done something great out of your village and you've done good, it's not a must that you get out of there. So maybe you say you're doing farming, okay? That's why I said if it is possible, but get out of your village. You know why I've just used the term village here? The appropriate term could have said is get out of your comfort zone, but that probably could have not lingered well with majority of the people. So see, when you come from a poor background, you realize that is a certain tendency that your family does. So if you were to break out of that and be able to do things differently you have to end that system probably let's say this uh, you know most of your guys they go to school the kindergarten all the way maybe to high school some do even finish high school and then once they do so they go back to the village they start doing the animal farming or maybe and that animal farming is not actually done in a way that can actually get you guys out of the poverty and then they start farming then they start and then they marry from the other side of the road and then here you are you have the family members you stay within the compound and that kind of a, you guys gonna be so thick mentally and you have not been exposed out there and gonna be very tough for you so what do we do in africa we say get out of that place go to the cities and towns and what have you whereby you can get different people who are thinking in a different way and that's what by the way some of the people and don't don't some of the people have actually or much of them or most of the people have actually done this great thing in transformation of their homes by virtue of them going to the towns and the cities but i stand correct under this capacity you cannot just wake up early in the morning and pack your bags and go to a city without knowing exactly where you are going just don't just wake up in the morning and go to city just because good joseph said you should go to cities because if you were born from poor background no everything has to be calculated okay and again i'm not trying to demonize this ability of the village to make you rich right now as we speak some people are getting back to the village and investing in these villages some of them are even building flats others are building others are doing the farmings and what have you i said if, if that's what you're doing in your village then stay there capitalize on that and you can get yourself out of the place but again, saying getting out of your village does not solely mean that by virtue of you getting out, you'll be rich. No, actually, most of the time, wealthy is the mindset that you need to incorporate it in your mind so that at least you'll be able to transform your life. Okay, let's get to the next point. Fine. Now, the next point is that don't fall into early marriages. By the way, have you realized most of the, most of the guys who come from unfortunate backgrounds tend to get married, especially our beautiful ladies? Why? Because most of them tend to think like, hey, um, see, if I get married, then it means the struggles of food, the struggles of such, struggles of living better, then gonna get myself out of it if I, by virtue of me getting married. And then they end up getting married when they are so young, some of them even 19, 20, 22, 23. For me, I do believe a lady should actually be thinking of getting married at a, around above the 25 and there, okay? Because you, first of all, we need to be, you know, you need to work on yourself, you need to actually go out there, at least, you know, uh, get some career or maybe work on yourself get good characters and understand who is yourself by the time you're getting to the marriage you already know who you and the problem they do is that once they're getting to the marriages at that particular horrible ages is that they surely get married to people who are not even stable by themselves. So they thought that they were escaping uh, sort of a, cold, a, a hot pan, then they jump into the fire. And that particular point, now they bring kids on board. And by the time they realize they not only have two stomachs to feed, but now they have like the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. And by the time they realize they have got themselves into a ditch, and instead of them figuring out how they can get out, they are still digging deep in that specific ditch. So what I can tell you is this, don't fall yourself into 
these early marriages. Don't ever think that you can actually salvage your life financially by virtue of you getting married or marrying. Okay? This African mentality of, I don't know, stew marries, they can... Guess what? This is 21st century. This is 2023. By my friends, things are changing rapidly. And I always give these examples. And I want you to think about this thing deeply. Let's take to these two examples of individuals who are born from the, uh, you know, uh, interiors, the villages and what have you. These are two beautiful ladies. One lady managed to, you know, go ahead and get the education, live by the rules and such kind of a thing, manages to get out of the village. Because one thing that can get you out of your village probably is, nowadays is high school. Back then, high school never used to get you out of your village. You could just go from all the way from nursery school or kindergarten to high school still within the local area. But if you were to go out there and get good grades you could go to university and most of the universities are actually located in the big cities so if you go to university you also meet another individual who actually was cream de la cream from their village and then you go there so if you're going to pursue teaching and then you're probably going to meet somebody who is pursuing engineering so by the time you realize you guys you're meeting up with guys who are actually smart you're actually getting to those cities and you're being exposed and those something, something of sort the other individual who do not graduate actually got sneaked out of the school and got married probably he attracted an individual who was just an average and by the time you realize you're bringing kids into a place or a situation whereby it's kinda horrible it's always good to make sure that you check this area because it's really affecting a lot of families in our continent called africa anyway but it's not only in africa like africa and asia allow me to spare the other big daddies anyway the part c don't take financial advices from your parents but respect them i know this one may be like what what did you just say yeah, I know we ought to respect our parents. They are wonderful people. I love them. You ought to love them or your guardians, okay? Now, the point is this. Whenever it comes to finance, this is where I always draw my line. This is what? Because if I meet somebody who managed to raise half a million Kenyan shillings and they are teaching me on how to raise half a million Kenyan shillings, I will listen to the individual because that individual knows something. If I get somebody who has managed to make up 10 million shillings, I will listen to the individual because the individual knows exactly how to make that thing. For God's sake, they are wonderful people, but when it comes to finance, I wouldn't really uh, consider me taking much of their financial advice. I would think of doing things differently because there's one thing I would say. Uh, this is what I, will, I always tell people. Check about what your parents are doing and do exactly different from what they usually do. Because what they are doing and what they are telling you probably didn't work. So uh, don't be shocked if it doesn't work because, hey, and these are the kind of the people, if you go back to Ushago, this is what we call our country in our country, we call it Ushago. So if you go back to Ushago and maybe you want to start a project, this is where you find a lot of guys who are telling you it can't work, we've tried that. Let's say you guys, you have a piece of land somewhere, you've been farming corns or maize and beans and what have you, or potatoes, like throughout your time. And then you go back home and you're having an idea of farming like things like gojet or something of so they tell you hey that can't work we've <laughs> i am telling you it, it can't just can't you see there is that backward mentality and what have you so the point is this don't take financial advice from them but what i'm saying is this whenever they talk about my dog be like hey, no, no no i don't want to listen no you don't do that that's a disrespect what you do is that they tell you you listen and listen and Listen, but do not actualize whatever they are telling you, all right? But I'm not saying that they can't overly have a good idea. There are some isolated cases where they can share with you an idea. Probably if they're telling you what you're not supposed to do, that one you should listen. Why? Because what you should not do is that thing that they did and they're regretting them doing them or not doing them. So if they are telling you what not to do, then that would be an amazing thing for you to listen from them. But telling you what to do and they never did that, then it means either they were indisciplined, they never, they knew their way out, but they never did it, or maybe let's say they never had the opportunity or something of sort. So, but the point is this, make sure that you respect them at all the costs. But when it comes to financial advice, draw the line, be very careful, otherwise you can get yourself into lots of problems and you can be in a very big situation. Let me tell you one secret. Also then they are thinking on how they can and make their lives better whether they are old or whatever the age they are they are thinking over the same and that's why you find most of the people going to gulf countries trying to hustle and travel the mess the much they can and they're sending back money home and they think that properties are being bought for them they come home they get discouraged that's a reality and that's a fact yeah and let me not stress on this topic because whenever i talk about parents in african society people have a lot of i don't know whatever point number d 
get financial literacy. If there's something that should be looking more than anything else in your life right now is the financial literacy. What does it mean? Literacy is that understanding of something, a well grasp of information of a particular project or a product. So the point is this, get the financial pro uh, literacy. And where can you get it? Right here on Good Joseph channel. All what you need to do is to subscribe and like this video. No, don't ignore whenever you hear people talking about one thing or the other. If there are some booklets about financial, listen to those booklets, read those booklets. And by the way, guys, talking of booklets, my book is about to be out and I'm going to let you know it's about financial literacy, it's about investments and how you can make your first million bob in this great country of ours. So stick around, that book will be out very soon. All right. So the, and by the way, has all the information that has been, you know, sort of, it's, it's not this kind of a book that you read that are made from out there that's not even resonating with our background. This one resonates with us. Okay, now the point is this, get the financial literacy and the understanding that you ought to have them so that at least you not only know how to manage your money, but also you know how to invest. Okay, and that's why I decided to be making these videos because some guys were shocked when I told them, hey, you can invest as low as 100 bob, 200, 300, 500, 600, 1,000, 10 or something of sort. They were shocked because they used to think that thing requires you to have an outrageous amount of money. That's not the case. Let's get into the business. The last one, but not the least, this probably is the finest one of all the points that I've actually raised. It's called the mind or the mental shift or mind shift. You ought to change the way you think. Eliminate what we call the scarcity mindset. A lot of people are suffering because of something called scarcity mindset. You see, you were brought up from a family whereby the parents used to sort of scale down the, we call it the marginal propensity to save, eh? whereby, you know, those guys never used to have like a luxury of money. So whatever they used to get, they used to like pinch it, you know, pinch bit by bit, pinch bit by bit. And they were telling you, hey, you know what? Money does not grow on trees. You're supposed to be very careful. You know what? Uh, whenever you get money, it's, money is not out there. There is no money out there. Be very careful. So you grew with this mentality. There is no money out there. That thing rings your head every time. There's no money out there. You're supposed to be careful. Whatever you get money, hold the money, hold the money, don't lose money, hold the money. They never talk about invest the money, take risk. They never, they never talk about that. So that's a very, very bad mentality that you can grow with it. Okay. Probably you may not, I may not be able to change you within this single video. So that's why you need to watch like several videos of mine so that at least you can be able to eliminate that software that was instilled deep inside of you and change your mind. So the point is this, do what we call the mind shift, change the way you think, change the way you perceive things and the way you, by the way, you know, let me tell you one secret. I have to admit this. I really used to hate this point, by the way. I really used to hate this point. Because sometimes I could go on YouTube and search uh, how to be wealthy, how to make money, and all those kind of things. And now I'll get lots of this information, like, change your mind. You know, poverty stands in your mind before it goes to your pockets. And I was like, no, I just want a practical things. Like, tell me, switch the appraise here, appraise here, and get money. And, all. and I was like, no, no, this doesn't solve any problem. Probably if you are out there... It does, and it is the greatest thing. See, what you conceive in your mind and sell to your heart and subconscious, actually, that's what you vibrate and attract. All right? So the point is that it's always good to do what? It's always good to make sure that at least you have the mentality that, hey, there is a plenty of money out there. I can make as much as I can. If you hear that somebody who is making a million bob in a day, oh, come on, who is limiting or what is limiting you not to make that amount of money? All right. I've never been in a situation whereby, like, you see, maybe you've been employed and you're making a thousand bob to a point whereby you program your mind and say, if I can be able to get a job that I'm getting 30,000, because you are relating it to the thousand bob that you're getting each and every day, you are having a limit in your mind. Stretch your brain, stretch your... Just accept the fact that you can make more and more and more and more than you actually think. That's the reality about life. I know that message has not lingered with the majority of you, but the point is this, the message is home. Okay? One day I'll never be crucified and told that I never shared this with you. And for God's sake and God's will, I'll be sharing more and more information with you so that we progress to the next level. All right. So make sure that you incorporate all that what I've shared with you. And by the way, remember one thing. Don't forget to like this video if it has actually helped you. And type more if you would like me to make more of this video. And don't forget as well to pick my number from the description of this specific video. Let's talk business and grab my booklets as well. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.